Uh, hi, my name is Dennis Glaze. I work for Oregon State University. And within the university, I work for Sea Grant Extension within the Aquatic Animal Health Program. Um, I work with an aquatic veterinarian, Dr. Tim Miller Morgan, and our emphasis, obviously, is on uh, aquatic animal health. And that's what we'll be talking about today is aquatic animal health in relationship to uh, plumbing life support systems um, for aquatic animals. We're going to go over here, and I want to show you this here. This is a, a typical setup of an aquatic animal life support system where you have some sort of sump here. Um, within the sump, usually there's a filtration system. Maybe they'll put the heater in here. I don't have the filtration system in here, so you're just going to have to imagine that. Um, you have a pump here that will take the water from that system and shoot it up into the main tank. The tank um, will fill and then overflow and it comes back down here. So we have a recirculating system. It's an ongoing system. Some key points to this is the pump here. Pumps come in different sizes, different flow rates, um, which will determine a circulation rate. So you can imagine water coming in through here and I have a spray bar across here so that water comes in and it goes across. And so we have water circulating from this point over to this point. One common mistake people make is they put this, the inlet, right next to the outlet. So your circulation just basically goes right here. Not a good thing for this reason. Fish live in the system, they eat, uh, and they, um, they give off fish waste. Okay, so the point to circulation is one, get the food to the fish, and two, get the fish waste out of the system and into the filtration system. Clean the water up and take it back in here. So that circulation is partially determined by two main points here. One is the size of the pump, and two is the size of the outlet here, okay? So um, these pieces here are called bulkheads. And as you can see, there's different size of bulkheads. And I don't have one with me, but I've seen them up to six inches in, in diameter. Okay, so that's what we're really talking about here is these bulkheads here. A bulkhead, all bulkhead is a fitting where you can take water out of the system and hook it into a, an, a plumbing device and into another system. And the idea is you won't have water leakage. Obviously, we could just drill a hole, but it's not going to maintain the water. So we use bulkheads. Bulkheads have gaskets on them. They tighten up really nicely. They're, they're very common in, in this trade. So the, the challenge here is what size bulkhead do we want to use, okay? And so what I want to show you then over here, this here is a, um, a pump that has a one-inch outlet size. One-inch um, pumps like this typically, um, on the average, will pump around 1,000 to 1,500 gallons per hour, okay? And so, you know, that's probably more than what we need for this system, but it's a real common pump, it's a real common fitting, and so you have that much uh, water coming through here, it's gonna come in through a one inch pipe. Typically what the, um, a student will do, or a new person to the trade will do, well I have a one inch coming in here, so it just makes sense. Let's take a one inch coming out here, okay? And so this here, again, is our bulkhead, and this little tool we have here, I've just downsized it with these reducer fittings to simulate a one inch bulkhead opening. And so um, this is what happens when you do this arrangement. Again, a real typical uh, error. You have a one inch line coming in, we want to have a one inch hole coming out or one inch bulkhead. And this is what happens here. So if you can imagine, this is your tank and you're, uh, you're set up above you know, some really nice carpeting or wood floor. Now you have water uh, all over your floor. Obviously, it's not what we want to do. So we need to figure out what size bulkhead opening would work best with this size outlet, okay? And so it's really nice here. If we start doing this, taking this off, we'll see the water flow starting to come down. Now we're at about, uh, I think it's an inch and a quarter opening. This here would represent an inch and a half opening. And you see, well, we're getting pretty close here. Water level's starting to come down. If we go here to the next size, now we're at a two inch opening. You can see the water level comes down quite substantially. So if this was your tank, you could probably run this pretty safely. You know, that noise is a siphoning effect that occurs and that's why instead of going just a two inch, you might even want to go back up to the next size, which is two and a half inch. Now you're safe. If something happens, something clogs this opening, you're still going to have room to prevent overflow. 
So um, you like to say a good basic rule is whatever size coming in, you double the size going out. So if I have a one inch line coming in, I do a two inch opening going out. And then to be safe, I like to go up one half inch farther. So now we're at two and a half inch. This way it allows maximum flow out of this pump going through this system. And the point being, there is another option. I could come over here and turn my valve and I could turn my valve down. So now I valve my water down to where, let's say half the water's coming out. And then I could reattach all those and probably go back down to a one inch opening and it probably would work. The, f the problem with that is you've reduced circulation and our goal is to get as much circulation as possible. The other thing, I'm gonna grab a bulkhead right here. The other thing to consider too, you know, you might say, why not just go as big as bulkhead as I can go? Well, the problem with that is, is size. The bigger the bulkhead, the farther down I'm gonna have to go on my aquarium. And costs, of course, costs are gonna go up the bigger the bulkhead. So you can see with this one here, we've made a lot of extra room just so we can show the overflow. But you would have to go down at least that much to make this bulkhead work. If you go a four inch or a six inch bulkhead, you're going down this far. And what happens is water is going to go out through this hole and probably never fill up to here. So if I have a bulkhead down here, this is all gonna be empty. It's gonna really waste my space. So I wanna go as big as I need, but no smaller and no bigger. You wanna get as close as you can to the right size. Um, that way you'll show yourself a circulation and you'll assure yourself um, having healthy fish with plenty of circulation for them. Again, take waste away and bring food to them.